What up, everybody? <laughs> Jason Lee from Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. And this is Melly Mel, a.k.a. <laughs> Miss Ford. Ford. <laughs> We're gonna see. If you, you want to stick with that intro? Go right ahead. A.k.a. Curve Queen. Yo, what's up? It's your boy Giovanni. <laughs> and we have a special guest in the building. Okay, so I need to get it right because I've been warned not to call you Tone. I've been told to call you B. Slade. Yes, that's correct. B. Slade. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So B. Slade is in the building. I <laughs> am very familiar with B. Slade. I've known B. Slade through the transitions. Right. Yeah. Uh, because I was raised, you know, I have foster parents. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You don't no, know. I, didn't I was know a foster kid. My mama, she got, she had some problems, but, uh, <laughs> they were a pastor and first lady. So I spent a lot of time in the church okay. and, uh, grew up in all that. And I'm sure you have an opinion about the church. We could talk about it uh, mm-hmm. at some point. And we have a I've conversation s- and I've seen your, <laughs> that part, I've yeah. seen your career evolve. I've seen you evolve. Yeah. So I'm familiar with you. I don't know how familiar you are with me and this reckless ass group here. <laughs> well, uh, we've had a great introduction so far. I'm, yeah. I'm enjoying it, Miss Ford. Hi. hi. Yeah. But you and Gio um, are familiar with each other. You yeah, guys are friends. Cool. Yeah, yeah, we cool. Yeah. yeah um, he's, he's amazing. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. We've been watching each other like climb up slowly. We Work met through hard. my cousin, Chester Gregory. That's right. Yeah. Well, okay. he's still in the basement, so he's still climbing. I'm out the basement. <laughs> I'm out the basement hey. now. <laughs> Moving on up. So to you- the east side. <laughs> That's all right. I'm out the base for now. Okay, so good. You. We're, okay. Everybody's really, really happy for you. Okay, so you grew up in San Diego, right? Yes. Okay, and it you... Is H- R- M- F- M- Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. Um, hey, what's that then. accent? I don't know what that just I, I, well, Mexico! For those, for the, I heard Mexico, and I'm actually wearing the Money Team Mexico shirt today for all the people out there afraid of the wall. I had, a, right. I had a Mexican um, Uber driver today. <laughs> well, you were in Mexico with a random I guy. I was but let's get not. Back to, let's get wow. back to our guests. Let's get I back to our wow. guests. That's what, I don't know why he keeps saying yeah. I was in Mexico. <laughs> Anywho, so you've got, you've got six siblings. You're the oldest of six. I'm the youngest of six. You're the youngest all boys. of six. All boys. Okay, wow. and wow, that must have been interesting growing up in that household. Daddy was, was a pastor. Crazy. Your mom. Well, he wasn't pastor till later on in life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So he was a preacher, but not a pastor. So it's a little bit not as harsh as being a pastor's kid. For those of us who did not grow up in a very religious household, can you tell me the difference between preacher and pastor? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people who are completely confused about oh, what yeah. the difference is between the two. Yeah, a preacher is someone who just knows how to preach or deliver a sermon. A pastor is that actually That would be Jason. Over- so oh. I'm going to start calling you Pastor no, Lee. No, not, not at all. Preacher Lee. No, not preacher at all. Lee. And a pastor. I, I am a heathen. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm okay with and it. He owned that it. thing too. Yeah. Yeah. And then a, a pastor actually looks out for people's soul. You know what okay. I mean? Like he's actually like you know, doctor. Like you go in and check in with him, you know, to see how you're doing spiritually. Does a preacher it, is not responsible for that portion. They just deliver the word, but they're not responsible so for it. So does that require like a doctorate in like theology or something like that to graduate from becoming like a pastor? For some, a pastor? for some, you mm-hmm. know, Bible Institute, a Berean mm-hmm. Bible Institute, mm-hmm. you know, um, my mother graduated magnum cum laude from there, but it, mm-hmm. it wasn't a system requirement because there's a whole bunch of people that go to school, but they don't have no anointing. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They don't really, you don't feel the truth of their conviction, even though they went to school to be a preacher or a teacher, you don't feel the conviction because you have to be called Mm -hmm. that's not an occupation that's a mission you know what I mean yeah okay so as the oldest um what were some of your you know responsibilities once your father I was the youngest youngest youngest. youngest. my my bad I keep saying oldest because I read somewhere that once your father passed away which is you know kind of further into the story a lot of the duties kind of fell onto your you know responsibilities fell onto your shoulders so that usually happens for the the oldest and that's why I keep making that mistake so that's that's my bad I'm sorry no it's all good by that time my my oldest brother had passed in 97 okay um, of AIDS actually really and um it it was just we just when we started getting close together like Mm -hmm. That's when he passed. Okay. So he couldn't take it. Mm-hmm. All my other brothers weren't necessarily in church like that. Okay. So I was the only one who was actually active in church. So it made sense that the church would have fell to me. I didn't want that though. No, I didn't want any part of that because right. I knew that was my father's vision. Yeah. Not mine. Yeah. Like if, if God gave me the unction to open up a church, it would be a vision he gave me. I could not fill my my father's shoes i was way too young and, yeah. and hadn't had the chance to properly grieve yeah i feel like that that kind of you know when parents make the transition from becoming you know mildly religious to you know something like you know take, be taking becoming that church. yeah exactly yeah. the effect that it has on the kids yeah. is really very jarring like i watched that happen with my sister and her only son i mean my sister was you know cool as yeah, hell and yeah. then one day she became pentecostal christian mm-hmm. and my god did the rhetoric change you yeah. know it just it was fire brimstone devil's airy mm, everywhere yeah, demons yeah, and whatnot yeah. i was like who the fuck right, are you right right you know and as a result i was like yo your kid's gonna have a really really difficult time mm-hmm. transitioning through life because mm-hmm. you're not really giving you didn't give them there was no 
lubrication, as we like to say on this show. <laughs> you, know, you didn't really like kind of, you know, <laughs> exactly. So he's been in and out of, this is my nephew. He's been in and out of jail and nothing's ever his fault. You know, he right, just, right, he's, right. he's had a really difficult time trying to come to grips with, you know, just his place in the world and such. And I kind of feel like the pressure that the, you know, forgive me for saying the Christian religion and j- just is sometimes just too much for people. Right. You know, it, it, sometimes it pushes people away from the church. Yeah, I feel like I feel like be, yeah. I feel like if you don't live up to the uh, to the extreme ideologies, then uh, the only other option is ostracism, and that's the worst thing that you could do to a human being. Well, I have definitely come through that, and you're absolutely right. I am grateful for the foundation that I got because I've never uh, had the desire to go too far no matter how much i'm out there with my expression who i am i do have a strong foundation as far as respect for all walks of life and Mm -hmm. faith but my parents were yeah they were in the church but my father was also a philosopher and he was a school teacher and educator for like 35 years so Mm -hmm. i got to see what the religious part did but i also got to see the man he really was when he was in that church we watched soul train we (laughs) watched James Brown, mm-hmm. you know, we, we, you know, I mean, he was a musician. My father played with James Brown okay. and Jackie Wilson before he got into the church. So mm-hmm. all I know, my parents met on the road. Right. Mm-hmm. All I know is music. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so, so you I'm, had really strong musical influence. Very strong. Okay. So I have a, I have a question. Okay. Yeah. So where I first came to know of you, I was in a gay club in New York. You were performing as you were Tone, I think at the time. I think I just unless just, you had, it unless just, it was it had just I happened. mean it had just it was it, at Splash 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 yeah. <laughs> on Seventeenth Street I, like I love that club yeah. it was at Splash I was in I the, just I was in the club they said B Slade A K who B Slade Tony because I knew you as a gospel singer right you know I grew up I'm gay I grew up in the church with foster parents and I don't go to church now because there's too many influences for me from other people. When I'm there for one purpose, and that's to just receive whatever the word is. Yeah. So I just stay at home and I get it on my Online, own. Right? Yeah. At, no, I don't even get it from, I mean, I call Devon Franklin, I call friends, I okay. do my own thing, I have my own connection to God. But for me, I think in just seeing that and your your get up at the time, because you walking in today, you giving me like Yeezy season a little bit. <laughs> you are a full production when yeah. you're performing. Mm-hmm. You're an artist. Is that, the, is that the Lady Gaga esque creativity of you as an individual artist? Not to say that you're like, like Lady Gaga, but is that just your persona as a performer versus something that the kids may show up at the club in? It just depends on the song. It depends on uh, the are mission. You, Each assignment is different, right. you know, okay. and I go with what I really feel in my heart. You know, I'm all of those things. I'm just bold enough to express them openly. A lot of us have all kind of expressions inwardly that we would love to be able to display publicly but we don't have a strong enough constitution to ignore people's opinions. Mm-hmm. I don't wow. care. So now that you're beast, so when did, so can we talk about Tone? Or yeah, is, okay. yeah. I mean, for context, of course we have to. Right. So for the audience that don't know, Tone, you were, <clears throat> were or are a preacher or pastor? Well, I'm no longer a pastor. Okay. You were I mean, a pastor. The word is always in me. Okay. I'm no, I'm no longer attending, actively attending a church. I'm not a member of a church or any okay. particular organization. So you were a pastor, gospel singer, phenomenal gospel singer. Default pastor by way of father's death, mm-hmm. not chosen or felt okay. called to be okay. one. Let's but you were pastoring over people. Y- y- yes. And shepherding souls. Yes. Okay. I Just was. For context. So you were really respected in the gospel community, gospel singer. And I think this was at a time, this was pre Frank Ocean. This was pre mm-hmm. any of the mm-hmm. social media really. Oh, right. Yeah. It is right before it this happened. was like, yeah, yeah, it was like, it was, that wasn't happening yet. It was, it was like 2008. Oh, nine. Like that. Oh, nine. Yeah, 2008. It was, it was, it was, yeah. the, it was then. Nine. And this was okay. like, even for me yeah. at the gay club, being as confident and out as I am, like, and not saying I had judgment, but definitely feeling that there would be a reaction to it because people hadn't been familiar with somebody <clears throat> publicly seen mm-hmm. one way, just the pendulum swinging another. Mm-hmm. What was that transition like? And what were you di- battling while you were Tone as the pastor? Um, well, number one, I couldn't really fan the flames on my career because I had like a hit album that went number one on Billboard out the box. And my father passed two months after that. It wow. happened. So right where I was at the beginning of the, the touring process, mm-hmm. I get hit with this. Oh, well, pump the brakes on this album. You're a pastor. Wow. What? But, but I've been rehearsing three months for this. You know what I'm saying? So, But it was the guilt of, you know, making sure my mother was good, mm-hmm. you know. And 
it was, I felt it was undue pressure, just mm-hmm. undue pressure. Tony. I couldn't really, I could express myself, but not, not in the way I felt I should have been able to express myself as a human being and as an artist. Mm-hmm. Gospel has like, you can say this, you can do that, but you can only go so far. Mm-hmm. You can talk about this, but you can't talk about that. Mm-hmm. This gets a pass on sin, but this does not. So you have to be very careful about in that world about how you present your art. But and, I, and I was pretty radical. Mm-hmm. I have to say I was pretty liberal and, and, and basically the bad boy of gospel they used to call me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, now Leandria done took my place. She's a bad girl of gospel. You know what I mean? Like but she's, she's a, when I, I love Leandria, but, exactly. but she needs to stop drinking Patron on uh, uh, speak online. <laughs> speak, speak, speak. <laughs> because speak. She, that she's That's my one, sister. She's yeah. one of the current artists in gospel that I can actually like. She speaks to my spirit. Yeah. Is she all online sipping Patron and cussing at her kids and acting up? Yeah. That's just to me. Because, see, this is the issue that I have with the church. I want to go to church and not get distracted by man and distracted by all the stuff that people have. I mean, we all come to church with what we got. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then when you're in there, you're not supposed to be bringing and playing all in the church. Yeah. It's just for me, it just it's too much of a contradiction. So rather than allow my spirit to get fucked up. Right. I'm going to just stay over here and do me and whatever sin and I do and whatever in your eyes and godly. As long as I know my relationship with God and, and the word and I know better and do better, I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. So when you were Tone, were you gay then or were you were you gay then or gay later? <laughs> well, what? What? Some- this is, so we had so listen, listen, listen. Beast like we we had a conversation about this and actually Jason shocked the shit out of me with his response. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I was it was one of the, the hot topics I was talking about and it was discussing homosexuality and if it's, you know, nature versus nurture. You know, mm. if it's a kind of situation where you are born that way mm. or and I've always been from the school of thought, um, just based upon, you know, friends of mine who gave me the example of Melissa the way I put it to people is why would I choose this life if I had an alternative? You know what I'm saying? Because when you come out as gay, especially in the church, like if you are involved in the black church, especially if you're black, Black. just just black as it is, you face so much criticism, ostracism from friends, family, community, society. society. Why would you choose that as your life? Tell the point of what we said on the show. So the point was, so I asked, so I talked to Jason about that and Jason I said I had some pussy. I was fucking girls when I was younger. Yes. And then I fucked with a friend of mine. And then I just, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say I just converted. Just that that's where my interest was there more than with (coughs) women. But here's the thing. Like I'm an energy guy. Like both Mm -hmm. sexes are attracted to me. Right. Because I'm not really a gender. Mm -hmm. So it's like trisexual. I am, I am be slayed. I'm whatever. I like what I like when I like it. So you like the term sexually fluid? That, that's cool, but you know what I mean. Incredible. But I think it's easier to deal with guys than it is with girls. I was I married for for uh, for five, almost five years, mm-hmm. and she was great because mm-hmm. we laughed a lot. You know right. what I mean? And I was whipped, <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, there was a lot of emotional layers that that drove me crazy. I'm a bottom line guy. Like, if there's a problem, let me. What? Is, how do we fix this? Why I don't really want to know the details. You say, Jason. You say, no, Jason. No, no, we just said no, each other no, that shit. No, he, no, 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 no. He say he's a bottom line it? guy, and y'all both face broke because they're trying to ask, they're trying to get me to ask if you're a top or bottom. I'm not gonna ask him that. He can tell us later. But no, the original question because I'm gonna go back to my I question. Know, interesting. The original I question was. I mean, you can share if you want, but the original we, question was we, when you were Tone. And when you were married, did you feel attraction to men? Yeah. You did, but did you ever act on it? No, I was faithful to my wife. Really? Yeah. So, how? Not even on no, like, I had to be faithful. I enjoyed it. No, because Kirk Kirk, Kirk Franklin is allegedly straight. And he. But he said allegedly. (laughs) 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 No. He's a. (laughs) Hold my people (laughs) 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 second. No, <laughs> no, because I remember I ran, I ran into her in Atlanta. Was like, yeah. okay. So, so my question is, and he never saw the show. That ain't my fault. So my question is, uh, for him, he went on Oprah as Tyler Perry did. Tyler went on Oprah and said that he was molested by a man, and that he just, you know, his issues and maybe the little femininity that he has, and all the light skinned boys he casts is all related to being molested. Mm. So, uh, oh, wow. so Kirk Franklin, he had an addiction to porn. So yeah. I don't really know. Okay, I, I don't know where I was going. I may have a conclusion, but I'm gonna just leave it there. <laughs> I feel like Let's we talk about it. This is great. 
<laughs> so do you, because I feel like what you're doing right now and what I've done is just living in your truth of who you are. Mm-hmm. And there's so much freedom in that. Like yeah. you're forced mm-hmm. to respect somebody. Like I never, I can roll with Crips, Bloods, Floyd Mayweather. Mm-hmm. I could mm-hmm. be at the club with straight homies, go to the gay club in the same night. Half the time people don't even know you're gay. And here's the yeah, deal. It don't fucking straight. matter. It, right. That's the thing is it doesn't you matter. Know? And I feel like. Um, with a lot of this industry, a lot of people are, shout out to R. Kelly, trapped in the closet. <laughs> what? So during your, during your, or there's the perception that we're just whoremongers and we have to have sex all the time. So during your marriage with your wife, you weren't out having gay sex. No. And, but you had urges, I'm assuming. I mean, if I f- saw a fine nigga, then of course I'm going to do or a, a fine take woman. or a fine woman. Whatever. It doesn't, I mean, like, yo, they look good. I'm going right. to double take. Mm. So when, I'm not blind. So double when three. was <clears throat> the, um, Full he transition. didn't say if you were a top or bottom. Though. You didn't answer. He no, didn't, didn't answer. That. I never answered. That. I, I just I thought I heard something. My, 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 my shit ain't working. Your mic's not okay. working. Your, <laughs> Maybe it's your phone's. His mic is dangling in front of his face today. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so, so when you so wow, wow. <laughs> real. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna play some Kirk Franklin when we go to. The <laughs> show. Oh, my people say. <laughs> I'm going to walk in West Angeles. They're going to put me oh, out. They're going to burn you. Uh, <laughs> that oh, damn fuck is it? Yeah. <laughs> so when did you decide that Tone was, you were done with that and you were going to be born again as B Slay? Uh, right around, let me see. Yeah, 2009, after I did the Lexi interview, I shot that interview on the Word Network around March. It debuted in September. Mm-hmm. And after that, I was blacklisted. So then wow. I was like, okay, well, you went MIA for a I long mean, time. A long time. I remember that. And then I had to figure out, like, okay, I can't come back as a mainstream tone. That's just not going to work because there's, the legacy is too strong in the gospel, the, the catalog. Even mm-hmm. though I spoke about everything, it still was more faith based in branding. Yeah. Okay, so I was like, I need to start all over again. How am I going to do that? Right. So I saw this movie. I was actually up for the role of Sylvester. Um, and Alan uh, Poole told me to watch a few films to prepare for that role. One of those films is called The Velvet Gold Mine, and it is loosely based off of David Bowie. And he was a folk singer who was rejected by his community because of his eccentricities. Mm-hmm. So he rebranded himself as Brian Slade mm. and took over the world as this huge rock star, mm. okay? Because he just started all over again and made a whole new name for himself. I said, oh. That's what I'm about to do. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to start all over again, make a whole new brand, still have my base, but expand and reach the entire planet Mm -hmm. as I am, who Mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. And so then be Slade. So hopefully. So it wasn't like be Slade in the spirit. It was be Slade from that. It was, it was definitely inspired. It was inspired by the, the art, which art should do. You know what I mean? I mean, I look at it also as a, as a life transition, a career transition as well. It's almost like, People refer to Tone and be like, "Wow, well, you always gonna be Tone to me." But would you have said that to Muhammad Ali? Mm-hmm. Would mm-hmm. you have said you're always gonna be Clay? Cassius Clay to <laughs> right. me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or do we remember him? Was well, this, it's was mama the, name of Clay? I'm exactly, gonna call him Clay. exactly. <laughs> but that's how <laughs> folks do you when him. they don't respect your transition. I want, right. I want to ask you though, and when you was with your wife, Mary, you say for five years. Um, mm-hmm. In the duration of that time, um, when you were still having these feelings for men and women, did you ever confide in your wife? About? She knew about it before we got married. Oh, she knew wow. everything oh, wow. about me before. You know what I mean? So it wasn't like she went and like blindfolded. Oh. Right. Nah, because I'm an honest dude. Right. That's you know, I've dope. always been honest. And she's still. But what? I'm so wow. hot, like girls don't care. Hey. Yeah. Well, hello then. Well, listen, okay. there's, there's, and there's going to be women. It's going to be Shaquita on here that says, "Oh, I would have never been with no man." The women sliding my DMs right now, yeah, trying to fuck. Trying yeah, to so, they, yeah, trying we, to convert. We hear, all, we hear all about it, but yeah, I mean, that, that wait, Miss Ford, we okay. hear all about it. Keep so, doing. We, no, because we do. We hear all about the girls that want to fuck Jason. Right. I'm like, give it up, ladies. It's, it's not going to happen. Gonna but happen. that leads me to my next question: Daniel's What ended? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's her her boo. What ended your marriage? Um, when my father passed away, like when a parent passes away in any marriage on either side with the wife or the husband is either going to draw that couple to or it's close gonna, together or it's yeah. going to split it apart. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult to still be a covering for somebody when you need one. Mm-hmm. Wow. And it's very difficult to be nurturing to someone when you're in need of being nurtured. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so, uh, we were supposed to move to, uh, Atlanta at the time. And when my father passed, I couldn't leave the church and I couldn't leave my mom. So that was a major conflict. Um, Did you want to be a pastor? No, actually, I, I, 
I just honestly wanted to be do music. That was mm. my true my truest call. Even though I know how to like go there, mm. and I'm you know because oh, you're annoying with, with the you word. And like, I would say, say that, like when it's time to go annoying. there, I will go no, there. No, because I'm gonna tell you, there, there's very few people that could do what you do. You and Leandra, we'll get back to whether y'all gonna work together on the album yes, because yes. that right there, I may you may yeah. usher me back closer to the Lord. <laughs> yeah, we've already worked on um, four songs, and we're we're in negotiations for. A, a possible tour, just to, nice. but she just lost her her brother as well. So oh, I just wow, wanted to wow. say, uh, you know, condolences to her family. Oh, I really wow. feel bad about that. So before you got with your wife, had you been with a man before that marriage? Yeah. Oh, so so it wasn't. So you were, but I was also with with did, women. Did you, you know consider I mean? yourself bisexual? Mm-mm. Trisex. He's more attracted to energy. It's that like, is not trisexual. Well, try, like, try, 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 try anything. Try, trisexual is when you try to put your dick in a hole and get it sucked at a club, or when you no. try, <laughs> or when you try to. Y'all ain't better trying to make me or feel you tr- goddamn or, stupid. Or when you try to drop in the a, heterosexual neighborhood, we call them trisexuals. Geo, we'll try not, anything. Geo, well, a, they're trying to. Geo, just a fact for today. We're not trying to make you feel stupid. You're doing it on your own. No, I'm not. Wow. No, when you try to drop a gospel album. How many, people in here, how many people in here have used the word trisexual for people that would try anything? Never. Never. As an urban, yeah, as an urban you colloquialism. Fuck all of y'all. I have Go heard. to hell. I have heard it. I'm not in that urban, way. Gio's yeah. playing his position very fucking well today. Go to, go to hell. So anyway, see, that's part of what that's part of why I don't go to church because black folks always trying to tell you you're going to hell. So back to our question. <laughs> <laughs> so did you consider yourself bisexual or you didn't or you didn't put? I don't put a label on anything. I've cl- clearly. I'm gay. I'm gay. Ain't nobody getting. Ain't no pussy coming to my house. <laughs> Unless it's a kid. No. I haven't even been up oh, in no, his no. apartment. No, okay. Cause I, no, because because I, <laughs> I have a rule. I have a rule. Anything walk past that door, it's all fair game. So no women allowed because they ain't even a chance. I'm never come over to your crib. You ain't invited. <laughs> you're, you're not invited. So <laughs> first of all, if I wanted you to come to my crib, you would come to my crib. Shit. Let's start with that. Wow. Shit. So anyway, back to back to the being covered confident, in the- dry, and secure. I know, <laughs> confident, dry, and secure. Goddamn, Jason. raise your hands if you're sure. I'm sure. Oh yes, I'm sure. Oh yes, yes. Lift up your hands over there. You're sure. Yeah, on that on that note, check your hands. On that note, I'm motivated to talk about the black church. So when you decided to transition yourself, your brand, and to live in your truth, uh, and to follow your into you know your thing and do what you want to do for you. What was your what was the reaction from the black church? It was mixed. Uh, uh, some people just went right ahead with me because they already knew that I was like wanting to do more than just gospel. Mm-hmm. They already knew that the talent, the gift, the writing, the acting, all of that should should have a bigger platform. And, mm-hmm. and no matter how much you try to follow the rules, it was never going to work if I happened to take a very provocative role. They mm-hmm. wouldn't have accepted that. So but, that that would have limited me. So many of them. Came over with me. Even with the Lexi interview, it was 97% positive. Yeah. Be- I mean, of course, that was in the DMs. I yeah. understand mm-hmm. what you're saying. Yeah. I totally blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I went through the same thing. Yeah. From pastors, bishops, mothers, grandkids, mm-hmm. all alike. Mm-hmm. We're all like, I don't agree. Some were like, I don't agree, but I respect you. Uh, I you just know what I'm saying? Like but everybody... it was all behind the scenes. Exactly. They never really up- affirmed and Melissa- or, re- or respected me. Publicly. Publicly. Mm-hmm. And Melissa, you were saying at the break that there was a backlash. What happened? Yeah. So when he has the Lexi interview and, you know, the line of questioning went towards his sexuality and he was probably more honest than you would ever, you know, publicly been. He received such backlash that all his all of his appearances were canceled. Basically, like his whole life was shut down. He was shut out. Blacklisted. You know, exactly blacklisted, you know, mm-hmm. just because he just revealed what his truth was. And shortly after that, your mom passed away. So, yeah. I mean, it just it it, it would make like sense. A couple that, months. After yeah, that, yeah. Exactly. It would make mm-hmm. sense that you would want to go through a completely different transition, want to rebrand yourself, reinvent yourself, yeah. because when a death happens, the next logical step what is just innate is you're going to evolve. Yeah. You know, you, you it's, it's death and rebirth. You Absolutely. come back as something completely different. Absolutely. You know, and so that's where Beast Slade came from, was yes. born from the ashes of, oh, I, yeah. I, I, listen, I can, and, I can deliver a sermon if I need to. And rising from the ashes. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. we don't have the time for that sermon today. <laughs> <laughs> sermon for what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now, so now are you still attracted to women? Or are you just attracted to men? Or are you just attracted Definitely. to music? I'm attracted to, to, to energy, not gender. But mm-hmm. would you still smash a woman though? Of he course. Did, what the fuck, Gio? <laughs> of course, the right what? woman. It's a certain type that of woman that does it for me, like to be the honest. Same thing. 
mean? No, it doesn't. You could be attracted to somebody and not want to have sex with that's them. That's true. And that's the problem Thank with a you. lot of guys right, when they think Oops. that you're strictly gay. They're like, they think you're looking at them all the time. Like, yeah. bro, the same yeah. way you don't want to hit every female that walks past you, I don't want to hit every guy that comes past me. Oh, yeah. After you know what I mean? Like, and, yeah. everybody is not attractive and to me in that way. Listen, yeah. after love and hip hop, <laughs> I can tell you that the people that are trying to do, I don't know what inspired these people to send me messages. I had somebody the other day send me a message. Me and my boyfriend play. I was like, there's a playground down the street from my house. <laughs> I don't want to play with you. <laughs> so, okay. So now where are, so you're comfortable and confident in where you are in life right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cause I saw you perform at the Brandy tribute. See, I'd be like mm-hmm. a fly on the wall. I don't even, I don't be all in the front. You, I don't, I forgot what you had on that day, but I swear I thought <laughs> Janet Jackson rhythm nation. <laughs> yeah. Was that what it was? It, it was, it was a nod to that. Yeah. You were not playing. You don't play when you perform. No, it's because I mean, first of all, because you're if very you're get in front of people, today, then you know what I mean? a performance. Because we're having a conversation. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. That would be like if you had Yonce over here. She'd be in a onesie at the mic. That wouldn't make any sense. You know what I mean? That's great oh for the God, stage. Oh my God, Yonce was you know here. Jesus Christ. You know this one over nope, here. Be a, he, oh, it, well, yeah, he wouldn't be able to focus. He'd too, be drooling and too. dribbling. Yeah. And oh no, Lisa would turn every mic off but mine. So Beyonce. Uh, yeah. Nothing. Totally nothing. shut out. Yeah, no, no, we wouldn't get an opportunity to talk to her. But yeah. So okay. So what do you think about? Okay. So I'm gay and I'm in the gay community, but I don't really like the gay community. To me, I don't really. A lot of shit they do is too over the top for Understood. me. Do you? What do you think about that? Having now been able to be in, perform, and be a part of the gay community publicly, what do you think about it? They're just catty. Mm-hmm. Really, ca- the black gays were real catty. What's the? There's a very there's a very well, there's, similarity between the black church and the gay community. Well, absolutely. And then there's segregation in the gay community between the whites and the blacks. Like that's a whole. We don't listen to the same music. We don't. Well, we do True. secretly, but we don't go to the same clubs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's very clear. it's like, very it's clear very, and yeah. distinct that you know that's the first thing I noticed. There's a lot of segregation in the mm-hmm. gay community. Mm-hmm. Um, and then secondly, that that, that some of you know the black gays can just be unnecessarily judgmental. Yeah. Just, just real cunty and broke. I like that word. Mm. No. It's one of my favorite no, words. You missed so. what he said. Very cunty and Cunt. broke. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Because they, they, they'll do it. They'll do a scam mm. to get some Giuseppe's mm. or yeah. some Balmain. Mm. But they'll that, pull a stunt. That, that, you know that, I mean? that car note won't be and, paid. And, and live your life. I just feel like it could be way more positive. But a lot of that comes from society. Comes from religion. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and it comes with uh, maturity. You know, you have to be confident in yourself. And when you're confident in your abilities, you don't have to be insecure and tear somebody else down to build your stuff up. And that's what I see a, a lot of that in the black and in the black gay community mm-hmm. as well. B. Slade, before you got here, we listened to this song. Yeah. It's called Conversations. Yes. And it's over the Beyonce <laughs> beat. Yes. Can you please? Because we formation. Got formation. Formation. Yes. yes. Track. And we got a lot of... Um, Tell us, please, and, and enlighten us on where you were. Was that like, like kind of like your clap back to everybody that's sitting in church that's like <laughs> judging you? Or please explain that yeah, because you're calling you're calling a lot of people out. You're yeah. making it seem like you're 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 insinuating that there is a lot more closeted folks in and there cl- that and, would yeah. that mm-hmm. would ever ever want the in, you know the world to know, right? You know, and I'm, so- on, I'm on ice skates <clears throat> with Lipton tea. <laughs> <laughs> So it's risky. It's risky. I'm on ice cakes with lifted tea. <laughs> so explain, like, what, what, like in detail, like, where were you coming from when you made that? Because I heard, it was, you, did it was it all, I heard you did it all in one day. Yeah, it was overnight. Um, I did this performance for a uh, Lynette Hawkins Stevens tribute. Uh, Walter Hawkins, you know, uh, yeah. Oh Happy Day, like real classic, legendary artist. And her, she and Kirk Carr had a, um, a tribute. Oh, Kirk Carr. And <laughs> do you know who Kirk Carr is? I they do don't know. Not. You they need to know. go watch. You yeah. need to go to YouTube when you leave yeah. here. Okay. He's like one of the most brilliant gospel writers, musicians that okay. ever happened. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll check him out. Yeah, I yeah, promise. Yeah, yeah, you will love him. Okay. Get ready to- <laughs> for every okay. mountain. That's okay. You just- run. Yes, yes, right. yes. <laughs> So we did the tribute. I did a song called <laughs> "There's a War Going On," 1984 song, mm-hmm. uh, but it's relevant to today. Mm-hmm. And I had on my conversation outfit. That's mm-hmm. on the cover. That's mm-hmm. what I. <laughs> I wore mm-hmm. and I performed the dick full out choreo the way I always do. Doesn't mm-hmm. matter if I'm at church or a club or mm-hmm. in the park or at home. I'm mm-hmm. I go full out. That's just what and, I do. And it is sometimes uncomfortable because yeah. it's so much, and we're yeah. not used to that. No, and you don't care. 
No, you can't you, care. You Not say, if you're gonna be an icon. When you perform, if you care, when you, you perform, you sing every single note. Yeah, and live. Don't care. Like no, but I mean, it's just Full it's out. performance from beginning to end. It's he's in a care. It's a character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I feel like art is the one place we can all be free. Mm-hmm. You know I me, mean? or at least should be mm-hmm. free. Mm-hmm. If I wanted to be safe, I'd just be Anthony Williams. I'd be Clark Kent. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But when you're trying to save the world from mediocre, awful, just mundane music and 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 you know it's bullshit out here mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's bullshit out here mm-hmm. and so when you're trying to make change and trailblaze and open up the doors for the creatives who make things interesting mm-hmm. and who make things amazing mm-hmm. it's difficult and most people are very afraid of full expression because of rejection mm-hmm. so do you think okay so earlier we were talking about whether or not you can be gay then not be gay do you think if you're gay you're just gay I think if you have affinity for both sexes, you're always going to have that affinity. So do you think that Donnie McClurkin is still getting it in? Do I think that getting it? Because, you know, he said he was delivered for men. Yeah. You know that. Say that. Yes. I've heard him say that. So he was converted. He He was was converted. Donnie McClurkin was sucking dick. Alrighty it then. Sounds, see, it sounds so they're gonna say, "Oh, he's messy." Is that that's what you do yes. when you're involved with a sexual with a man and a man? This is mm-hmm. what happened. Yes, there ain't a lot of other things. Okay. Going. So, so my point is that if he was delivered, <laughs> if he stomped that demon out, if he what <laughs> stomp that demon out, stomp, um, if he stomped that. <laughs> demon out, <laughs> okay, hold do, on. Do, 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 yeah. you, do you do you believe that you can pray away? Because Mike Pence thinks that you can get rid of it. I was about to say, I mean, so the election has just happened. Oh and God, um, we were saying, that, you know, Donald Trump, everybody is yeah. so, you know, whatever. They have their personal feelings with that. But I have been saying, don't fear Donald Trump. Fear who he's electing into cabinet. Fear who his vice Pence. president is because Pence believes in conversion therapy. Back in oh, the 19, like, fi- 1950s and yeah, 60s yeah, when yeah. they, you know. Shock you. A, yeah, exactly. Electric shock therapy. And, Ex- exactly. Yeah. Because they can get that demon out of you. Right, right, it's right. bullshit. Yeah. But he actually believes in that archaic notion that you can electrocute somebody <laughs> to the point where <laughs> they different. are they they come back as heterosexual what well i wish they used that on uh probing out and and zapping out racism does it work on does I, it, can, I, we, can we use electrolysis on, on that it, it, amen on, and hallelujah yes. does on, it work can that, I say that way can i can zap I some sense back into your ass <laughs> exactly so, I, i'm on. still waiting to find out if donna mcclurkin <laughs> <laughs> but let's just say this i'm gonna say this about about um pastor because, but, and let me say it's just a way to set it up because i feel like it's those kind of things <laughs> That perpetuate the belief that we all have a choice or that we can all decide <coughs> one day to not be a sinner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I really feel like it's a way of making people. I don't know. I don't know what that is. What do you think? Well, it's definitely confusing to the masses. But this is all I'm going to say about Pastor McClurkin, because he and I have had words and we still have unfinished business to discuss. <laughs> like words Whoa. in the parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> well, the initial discussion wasn't one, but it wasn't under those circumstances. Yeah. But uh, he has his own internal issues to deal with. And I find out that certain generations have a harder time reconciling that than Generation X and then millennials mm-hmm. have no problem. So Not it's just, zero. it's a generational fear. Mm-hmm. Okay? I, I, I believe that. I, mm-hmm. And so because... He didn't necessarily cover me, but I will cover him in love in this regard. I understand how scary that might be. Mm -hmm. You know, it's real easy to say what he should do, but we don't know the circumstances that he's facing. And he's caused a lot of damage, more than I can say for even my own career, because he's part of the reason why I got blacklisted. Really? But but even with that, every 10 years, our absolutes change. Mm Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Maybe he's grown or evolved. I don't know what's going on. Last I heard, he was getting, you know, married to Nicole C. Mullen. And I was just like, honk, like, what's going on? You know, (laughs) but then again, I was just like, hey, why do I care? You know, as long as I'm making my coin, touching people and making art, that's great. You know, Mm -hmm. and I I wish him the best. Mm -hmm. I just I just want everyone to. For those of us who are walking in truth. Mm -hmm. uh, Just keep your mouth off me, man. Like, you know, I. I see, yeah, that I see could be taken a media. lot you know of clap back and a, you clap back you know, yeah. a lot at certain people yeah, that's trying I'm to call just, you out. It's like, yo, come on now. If we're yeah. going to have this discussion, let's have a full-out <laughs> conversation about the state of the black church and black 
the black community at large concerning sexuality. I was We're gonna, not talking. I, I was We're just say, not talking. I was going to say you're one member of the black church. Most of the people singing in the choir is gay. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm just. Well, that was the first line of conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, y'all haters corny with that he needs deliverance. Check out your choir stand. They all need deliverance. Yeah. You know Ooh. what I mean? Like that's it's like if we're going to have a, we're going to play that game. Let's let's not. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, react to this because I could react easily. Mm-hmm. Anyone can react, but I don't need to react if I'm in truth. I'll just respond. Mm-hmm. Let's have a real conversation, not a messy way, not a clapback. Just let's talk about all of it. Don't just single me out. Well, how did I get? How am I the target? Well, you know what I'm saying? well because I th- I that. think to attack you publicly is to put fear in everybody else to keep themselves in the closet. But so that I'm way, not afraid. Yeah. See, mm-hmm. see, you can't keep dogging and bullying somebody because I was bullied all my life. I mean, just just intentionally picked on. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But it makes you stronger. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't keep. I can't get the same cold twice. Mm-hmm. Once you hit me with that, it doesn't even. And that's why in the song I say, I heard B Slave is fact. I'm taking the power of the things that they shot at me and using that as ammunition. That's my strength. Mm-hmm. It's almost the more that you tear me down, yeah, you I them. get built up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's just my resistance level is so. You ate biology. So, so, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, the pastors of LA, have you seen that show? Preachers of LA. Preachers of LA. Preachers of LA. Yeah, Lemme I've seen that show. What, what do you think about these preachers that do reality shows? Do you think there's a space for reality television with pastors? I would prefer it not to be. Yeah. I would prefer it not to be because it's not reality. Mm-hmm. It's real. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> no, it's, what you're seeing on those reality shows is not a pastor's reality. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's, I, it's an edited version yeah. of an ideology of what it could be. I see one, uh, one of the pastors had a super huge beef with his brother. Like, yeah. like I, I forget his name, but I'm like, what the heck? Like right. pastors beefing with their own family, well, their own yeah. kin. Like, one thing that just really kind of just confuses me about, you know, just leaders of the black church shows like Pat preachers of LA, mm. et cetera, et cetera. Isn't the, isn't the, the, the foundation of being a man of God to be a man of, of humility Mm. Isn't that what it? That yeah. is the well, furthest I, thing I, I, from I was, what they let me, are. Let me say my past. So the pastor that I had growing up as mm-hmm. a foster kid, Pastor uh, Willie Easter, he's dead now. Mm-hmm. He and his wife Elnora Easter, who's also deceased, they were like when I tell you, we never. They never talked good or bad about the gay community. None of that. They never preached to our congregation about if you do this you're going to hell you do that they taught the word Mm -hmm. they made sure that the music was something that got your spirit Mm -hmm. they made sure the activities kept kids out the streets yeah like what i loved about them was uh, i didn't like that they made me go to church a lot but what i did like about them is that it was more mentorship than a dictatorship or a judging panel yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. and i feel like now you know like our church was kojic pentecostal women weren't supposed to wear pants they knew what the rules of the church and all that but they didn't come in. But when there were women who had problems at work that their jobs made them wear pants, he helped them to where they can wear dresses. He would yeah. go to their jobs. So, so I say that the, what's changed now is that I feel like it is so judgmental now. It's yeah. just the church now to where, you know, there should be programs or some type of if if somebody like you who is a figurehead in the gospel community and in the, in the church community comes out and is, has the courage to do it. Why don't why don't more people come together and say, look, how do we usher men and women? Because I think when you think about gay people in church, you just automatically think, oh, always. Men. Mm-hmm. There's lesbians Lesbianism too. Lesbianism never mm-hmm. is, is spoken of. Mm-hmm. So wow. it's never spoken. Of. Why do you think? Do you think it's a generational thing that is still full of fear to start that conversation? Or yeah, but not the not the millennials and not the the tail end of Generation Xers. The Bishop Blakes will never have it. Probably not. Okay, but the Kiki Sheards, Kira Sheards, probably not. Hmm. Oh, because of the bloodline with the Clark sisters. But they have a huge gay following. Probably so. Does it frustrate you that the gospel singers have such a big gay community following them <laughs> and don't use their platforms <laughs> responsibly, responsibly? I'm just trying to get there because I feel it. Because I think I'm getting it as we're talking. He's, Probably he's, so. he's got like a lot going on yeah. behind that facade and all he wants is a honk. <laughs> that's all I want is a honk. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when you came out, did Kurt Franklin but let's call do that. you? I was going to say about that. I want to talk about that. I never came out. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was going to promote a new album. Right. I had just changed over to Sony Records. It's an album called Unspoken. It was my last closing out album just to get out of that deal. That's Tone. I went as Tone. Mm-hmm. 
I went there to promote the album. I did not know that it was going to go in that direction. Mm-hmm. We never talked about my album. Mm-hmm. So I just want to say I never came out. I was just asked a series of questions. You know, some people do an interview to specifically come out. Yeah. That's not what this was. Oh, so it, and then it, this was supposed to be about my album. And you decided to go there. No, she no, decided but, to but go there. But then you decided to just answer truthfully. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That was a, that, that was my choice. But I'm grown. Yeah. And I got tired of just, you know, who are these people? I don't care if the whole world don't like who I am. As long as I know I'm being honest with who I am, fine. That's not going to change how I feel about myself. The mm-hmm. whole world could stand against me, but I have my own strong constitution. And I got to that point that was like, this is what it is. If you're bold enough to ask me, because you've never asked this of any of my gospel counterparts or constituents, you've never asked them mm-hmm. these questions. Mm-hmm. So it made me feel like, oh, uh, you... Why are you getting so personal with me? But I know there's several other people that you've interviewed with that you've never went there with. Right. So it felt at the time, it felt like y'all trying it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? At that time. Mm -hmm. We're cool now. Lexi, I post her stuff on my my page. You know, we're cool. Because ultimately, even though I didn't like the way it all went down to a degree, it got me in this interview with you all. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather be on this side of the story than still on that other side talking about some struggle. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because it's not a struggle. I am who I am because God made me that way Mm -hmm. unapologetically. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that I didn't take myself out because I almost did. It was awful Mm -hmm. how those people like- Are you talking about suicide? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. October 24th, 2010, had some Tylenol PMs. I just wanted to go to sleep and not wake up because mom's dead, dad's dead, church is, you know, the whole world's turned on me. me. Yeah. Yeah. It was awful. Wow. I'm in. I'm living in the so, house where both of them died. So what? What? <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. So what? What do you think saved you, or what made you not end yourself? I, I didn't want that to be your legacy. The legacy, because my parents didn't raise <clears throat> a, a quitter. You know, my father was a very strong, strong man. My mother was a very strong African American woman, and I felt like, regardless of what I was going through, if, if you know, if I if I really truly wanted to make a difference, I was going to have to man up and. Make sure that that wasn't how my story ended. I mean, it would have been a great lifetime story. I'm sure the legacy of it, of the story would have carried on, but I didn't want that to be the end point. The end point because mm-hmm. I knew, you know, there's a fighter in me. Mm-hmm. You, you said know, a good lifetime I'm resilient. Movie. <laughs> they probably would have had Jason Weaver play you. Oh, you that's hilarious. Life, I love Jason you know, Weaver. Oh, lifetime, wow. <laughs> them lifetime movies be so They'd be far casting off. them crazy. <laughs> well, we are definitely glad, man, that you didn't do that, man. Yeah, and and yeah. you are an amazing... If anybody has not heard this brother sing, I'm going to try to get him some later to sing, but this brother's phenomenal. Oh, yeah, Thank no, you, bro. He is. Thank so, you. so let me ask you, for the young men and women out there who are listening to the interview, word each word that we're speaking, speaking of, yeah. um, what is your message to them on how to deal with the struggle that you went through? in this transition and in just the way that it came came to a head and what would you tell them to do differently than what you did um i think what i would have done differently in the transition i would have prepared a cushion for when the money wasn't coming in like if you if you're in a a powerful position whether it's in church or any public position and you go there your economy is threatened you know Mm -hmm. what i mean so you have to make provisions for yourself that until the initial impact of the the bomb, until that settles, you need to have a little nest egg so you can survive. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that. Right. Because I was doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Um, But how could I plan for something I didn't know that was going to happen? You know? Right. So uh, as far as the struggle is concerned, each person grows differently. I don't think anybody should be forced to come out because somebody else came out. I'm not even into coming out. Mm -hmm. Just... If anything, expand within. So many people are coming out, but they haven't developed on the inside. And I have, don't come out till the cookies are done. And I have this conversation all the time that I never said the words "I'm gay" to my family. They heard it on Love and Hip Hop, mm-hmm. and it wasn't that I felt I needed to be in the closet. I just feel like, for me, I know what they can handle. Mm-hmm. Right. And so why well, sit up and talk about who I'm sleeping with? I don't ask them, "Are you straight?" I don't never ask right. one of my brothers, "Are you straight?" Are right. you straight? Because I don't care who yeah. my family is fucking. You know, right. whatever. Uh, and they all keep popping out kids. So you I'm just, assuming they're fucking. You somebody. just reminded me of something that I wanted to ask you a little bit <laughs> earlier. <laughs> I mean, all my just siblings to... got at least three or four kids each, and, and I got ten siblings. Honey, li- that's a lot going. I don't buy nobody Christmas presents. Okay, listen. Wow. Yeah, I could see how that could be a challenge. Um, 
Speaking of family, you said earlier in the interview that your oldest brother passed away from uh, complications due to AIDS. Yes. Okay. Um, and there's you know six of you, six yeah. boys. Yeah. You this you know not wanting to out anybody. I'm not sure what's the the deni- the dynamic in your family, but did your older brother pass away from complications due to AIDS because he was homosexual? It was no. Like, no, no, he, he that was, was drug of, drug related. Drug related. So he got that through. He was heavily on through the needle. Okay, needle. intravenously. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. All right. I just I wanted to know. However, it. he was the only brother I, I only um, oh. that I spoke with about it. Okay. And he because I I had a feeling like he wouldn't judge me. Okay. I wasn't sure about my other brothers. So they all know now. I'm assuming. I mean, I they mean, had to have always known. Right. To be honest, but okay. you know, but but, but, but I mean, I was the youngest. Anytime you have the same sex born Mm -hmm. over and over again Mm -hmm. by the fifth or sixth egg that could possibly be a Mm -hmm. boy Mm -hmm. the estrogen sees in the woman sees that as an invader really so it starts trying to pump extra (laughs) estrogen into that particular fetus which and like you said earlier i don't need to tell my family i'm gay i come home every christmas with a roommate and you asking me (laughs) where where the kids at (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I dress. My hair is always cut. I got a cute roommate. I'm not. I kind of feel draw like your y'all own conclusions. Is dumb. <laughs> draw your own conclusions. Yeah. Okay, I, I well. tell them, I'm waiting on y'all to, to ask me shit. Um, okay, well, you know, I do have a question, and this might be a little, you know, tacky or whatever the case is, but I have to ask, just in the vein of what we were talking about. If you talking. ask him if he's a top or a bottom, I'm gonna be in. You already. That's you. That's you. you that's your lane, mofo. Okay. If you want to answer, you can. We've already talked about Kirk Franklin <laughs> yeah. and um, Donnie say, McClurkin. Y'all yeah. need to stop bringing up that Kirk no, no, Franklin. No, no. <laughs> Man. Ah. <laughs> Bishop Eddie Long. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Good question. I, you know, because inquiring. Must have got some good dick in Mexico because you are on tonight. I wow. fucking. He's so evil. I was in Belize. <laughs> Shit, you was in Guadalajara. You was in Tijuana. Uh, Bishop I, 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 fucking law. I saw the water. I think she was in Flint, Michigan. <laughs> wow, I think I'll take some you who. I would. <laughs> Uh, Bishop Eddie Long. Yes. Okay, so that was a major catastrophe. He rose to fame, and <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> it really was. I mean, you know, you know what my enduring image of that man is is the him photo fucking the, the, the gym, gym clo- that gym photo of him in the mirror. Yes, with that wearing, body that uh, wearing like Under Armour, the Under Armour muscle shirt. Because I got friends I'm, over I'm at Under right, Armour, so I was like, right "Ooh, now. how'd that do for your brand?" I'm not I'm gonna, just I'm not gonna say I, I'm not gonna say I'm opposed to a pastor putting his hands on me, but if you look like that, I would have a problem. Now, yeah. if Boris Kojo was the pastor, I'd let him. Praise me from morning to night. Praise me. Well, him. Bishop what? Eddie Long has openly come out about his <laughs> illness, right? It is, it is, so he- homosexuality is an illness, according to him. Is that is that what the is that what's happening? Is that what you're saying to me? No, right? I'm not oh, saying that. that. Wait, wait, wait. That's hold on. What he just that's, said. That's, like, that's no, news to me. I haven't I'm heard that. I haven't heard that. <laughs> Bishop, I have Eddie not Long. heard that. No, stop, stop, stop. Let's Bishop slow down. Eddie Long. Go Bishop, cont- Ed, Bishop Eddie Long was mentoring young men in Atlanta. And then he was and he was mentoring their spirits and their assholes. Let's just set it up. <laughs> <laughs> then hold on. Then after after he was mentoring them assholes, a couple of them were underage and they came through and said that he had done some shit that he wasn't supposed to do. The church got behind him mm-hmm. and supported him through that part of his life. And then there were pictures that surfaced of him losing a lot of weight. <laughs> People assumed because when you're gay, like I just lost 18 pounds, my <laughs> HIV status is still negative. <laughs> he's vegan. Um, it's not vegan. Wood. It's not is wood. that vegan. what does that? He, okay. He's vegan. <laughs> <laughs> no start. <laughs> we're almost done. Uh, okay, we're almost there. <laughs> okay. So what? Pulse. So the point is, no, he didn't say that being yes. gay was an illness. Thank you. Oh, I, he was saying illness because he's assuming because he's lost so much weight, he had AIDS. No, I didn't. No, he what? didn't say that. He I didn't say, say that either. But I'm saying <laughs> no, you in the hot no, seat today, Gio. Because, wow, no, they on you, you, right? Feel now. <laughs> no, because before B Slay came in, you told me how he had to read you for filth for disrespecting him for being gay. I didn't even that? say that. I just said we yes, was at did. Zen Lounge. Oh, I remember I, that. Yes, yeah, and but, I said something, and he no. He, tell the he, story for our audience. We well, first of all, he told me not to say anything. Hey, guess what? Oh, well, I'm saying it. I was at. Look at your hands, Gio. He's real gay to me. Wait, wait, wait. What is that? Is this how you feel all the time? All the time. Listen, Gio, our community will receive you if you want to come on over. (laughs) 
And once you get the gay audience behind you, you're in there. You're winning. You're in there. <laughs> fuck you. No, thank fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> you're cool. <laughs> no, fuck you. So, no, we were at Zinla. Now, wait, mind you, why, I, did he, why did he get a fuck you? Oh, he wait, didn't wait. say nothing. I know, right. Like, <laughs> fuck you. You cool. Listen, whatever, man. You just want to fuck been, everybody. I've been no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Kirk Franklin, where you have when we need you? <laughs> we need a good old bottom in listen, here. Listen, okay, listen. So go to hell. I love this guy. I love y'all. Okay, so they were at Zen Lounge. Her- they were at Zen Lounge, and Gio said to him because this is the thing. You know, we 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 accept heterosexual friends uh, allegedly um, once in a while. Yo, don't ever say allegedly <laughs> after no shit like that, bro. Don't do that shit. But they always think that they could play as like, yes, yeah, like we are. Doing but I'm a that. comedian. People know I, I have a it. lot of I gay friends. But you did. That. I love the LGBT community. So tell, tell the story. So I saw him Jeez. at. Um, we know each other through my cousin Chester Gergen, and also Elijah Blake. Elijah Blake, yep. who's an amazing, another amazing artist. And I saw him at Zen Lounge one day. I was like, you know what's up, bitch. And <laughs> I said it like you know, like Wait, what's up? Put the name? camera on B Slay's face because it's <laughs> resting right now. He's not finding humor in it at all. So um, he said hi to me. We you know we we greet each other, and then kept the next cordial. The, the next day, I I look into my fan the flames. I look fan into my flames. DMs on my Instagram, <laughs> and it's B Slade, and he politely said, Read "If you, you ever filth. call me a bitch again in public, don't ever do that again." He said, I would have texted you, but I don't have your number anymore. And I said, I'm so sorry. I apologize. Because in all of my gay friends, like, you know, they know I'm the funny one. Like, they they laugh at it. So, but he was the first one that addressed it, and I respected it. Can you explain why And I've never done it, it again. Because I think this is important and educational. Well, first of all, I respect him. So, I feel like it was best well. to, to, to talk about it as men off the scene. Everybody who's around me doesn't know the nature of how, how cool we are. Mm. So I don't want any other brothers thinking they can just walk up to me and just call me out, you know, mm-hmm. even if it's a playful way. Right. Some mm-hmm. people will use that as a medium in the name of fun mm-hmm. to disrespect me as a man. And I don't want to do that. I, and, I, and I respected Somebody. that and, and it's never happened again yeah. with all due respect. Yeah. So I, mm-hmm. I apologize then and I get your point. Yeah. I mean, we good. He's a comedian, so, so everything. No, so and I, mean, I was in his video. I mean, we don't have no yes. problems. You know, the reason video was fired. The reason why I thought that that was important <laughs> is because I do feel like a lot of my straight friends, people at this point, have pretty much gotten the, the notion that if you come for me, especially in public, that could go really left for you because I could say some crazy shit. I'll say some <laughs> shit like, "What." <laughs> <laughs> you wasn't saying that yesterday, Gio. See, see, and that's how shit gets. See, started. on this show, on this show, all we you said ever. was Melissa you was with this? Colin, and then on, on the news, that's you was Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, wow. yeah. No, it, it's, it's, it just, it yeah. just it just sucks. It just sucks. We were talking about somebody named Colin, who's a friend of mine and a friend of Jason's, and then media take it was like, oh, she must mean Colin, Colin Kaepernick. I'm like, why? Right? Why? Because right. why? Cause uh, so I mean, that's just so, that's great. It's just more press. Use no, it. no, 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 it, no, no, no. It was, I was his side chick and his girlfriend called me. Oh, that, no. Yeah, I don't need those kinds that. of motherfucking so, yeah, stories yeah, out no, there because no, I don't no. want another fucking chick's man. Yeah. Be clear. Daniel Sunjata. Uh, again, David Otunga. he had a girlfriend that he didn't David want to he didn't tell me David about. <laughs> he didn't tell me about. She made herself known, and I was like, enjoy your life so with we're him. Not gonna Goodbye. Tell, we're not going to tell the audience that you're the one that released Genuine's dick. You're hilarious. You know what, B Slate? Today you you caught Miss Ford. Normally she got the cocoa butter titties. Oh. And she's covered up today. Well, first of all, she's in a room. You, she's in a room. With, butt, she's in a room with three titties. men who aren't worried about her titties. No, I'm not. Why are you saying normally? <laughs> you caught it. Yeah. Hey, okay, fuck you, didn't. bitch. <laughs> the fuck does that mean? The <laughs> fuck. <laughs> you know what? I re- I renounce my throne today. If you gonna keep with that shit? <laughs> you, throne. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a good toilet. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. If you want to tell the audience that you sit on the throne today, that's all. You know what? I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Edit all this shit the fuck uh, out. No, it's no. staying, bitch. Edit all and this. I'm staying. <laughs> no, I'm not. And you, and you, and you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, M- Melissa. I just got this vision. Melissa was telling me about her uh, her OBGYN, not OBGYN, but her gynecologist doctor who couldn't find a thing in your vagina. What was it that got lost? The uh, vulva. Jesus, no, <laughs> my IUD. <laughs> he oh, find inner it. uterine device. My inter- yes, my inter. Hi, my Miami, Melissa. you're yes. cuter than. And an inner <laughs> You're funny. So when he was digging around in there, what is that process I like? I resent that remark. It, it is. Um, 
It is invasive. I'm funny. It, funny. I, I clown? I'm no, a clown? you are hilarious. It, it was, no, what do you mean I'm funny? You trying to be funny? Listen, can, I, can, I, can I talk about my pussy? Thank you. I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> not that, not Dessert that, wine, yummy. Not that there's any man in here that wants to hear you talk about your vagina. You just today. asked what, what the process was. Okay, so. I do. I believe in her vagina. Okay, well. Gio, you got resting bitch face or what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave Gio alone. <laughs> Continue. My gynecologist like went fishing life. around for my my. He injury. went fishing uh, around. Well, you, there was fish. Okay, no, there's chicken, not chicken that analogy. Okay, he went looking for my intrauterine device. Okay, okay, all right. All right. And in order to try to coax it out of coax your it. cervix, what does the coaxing out of your vagina look like? <laughs> like, what, are you talking to him while he's coaxing something out your vagina? We were having a conversation. Yes, <laughs> and we lay, were, and the nurse was holding give, my hand. Give me a vision. Are you laying on your back with your legs up, and he's fishing around while you talking to some yes. chick that looked like? Go girl from Golden Girls. What's going on? Yes, exactly like that. Exactly, what? exactly. My feet were up in stirrups. Yes, and he was trying to get investigate. My, he was trying to find it. <laughs> First so, forty eight. Right. Yeah. Do you get stimulated by that? No, absolutely not. It, it feels I, like. Wait, yeah. why are you so loud right so, now? Because it is painful, and I and I and I had you a, touched a button. I I no, 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 no. It's just like, I, 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 no, because I got a lymphatic <laughs> massage the other day, and I know he molested me. <laughs> I said, so you were saying so after the massage, man. she going to say, you know what I was doing, right? I said, no, you know what you was doing. <laughs> but it felt good, so I didn't file a complaint. He... <laughs> <laughs> if it sucked. Oh, security? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back to him fishing around in your He vagina. was trying to coax it out, and the way that they do that is they have this long, very skinny, skinny prod with a sharp Shout out end. to my ex. <laughs> and... <laughs> And he pokes your cervix uh, to dilate it. Shout out to your ex. To make it bigger so that they can go is, in and pull it out. Yeah, this show is just, it's just went was all it the way painful fucking on left. The, was it painful coming out of your vagina? We couldn't get it out. It's still in you. It's still in there. So if you go through airport security, we're going to see an inner uterine device on the now, X-ray. Please, no, 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 uh, What no, I'm about no. to ask right now. Shout out I to need, our audience uh, that's learned a lot about Giovanni. What today, I'm, by the way. Fuck all of y'all. <laughs> no, I told you I'm not going to accept your advances. <laughs> what I'm about to ask right now. You're violating company policy. What I'm about to ask right now, please do not judge me. Oh, okay. Okay. What? You suck so, dick. It's okay. <clears throat> we'll edit that out. You better edit that the fuck out. <laughs> Your I what is it called? IUD. IUD. Is that like a from a birth control? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. It That's has not kept me question. safe for years. I had to ask. Okay. So yes. how long has it been in there? Ten years. Jesus Christ. Do you know but, it, I mean, doesn't that normal though? They say that that, that does happen a, more than There's a five year and a ten year one. And the five year one um also incorporates estrogen and hormones. Okay. Which I did not want. Okay. So the ten year one Andrew's is just, laughing at your pussy over there. <laughs> Andrew's so humored by your pussy. It's, uh, he's looking at Don J and me like, oh, we talking about our pussy today. So, this does not come with photos, Andrew. Actually, I was, I was, I'm drawing a diagram. Yeah, okay, it. it's like this, this, this. We need to bring your doctor string, on to talk about your pussy because there's so many okay, men so that So that's what an intrauterine DM. device kind of looks like. It's like a fucking stick figure. Would I thought that's would the you, thing yeah. they put on top of the house back in the day for television. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what it looks like. That looks more that. like Kirk Franklin's Midwest. dick and balls. <laughs> would, you be mad if you, would you be mad if you still got pregnant what? with that in you? Oh, my oh God. I'd be furious. It cost me $750 to the, get that the, shit implanted. The shit. Like, damn it. I bought my ex two pairs of shoes at Barney's. I could spend more than that. <laughs> Wait, but so listen, can I say something as a disclaimer? All views expressed today by the three of us have no reflection on our guests. No, none just whatsoever. We're chair. just reckless as I'm usual. I mean, no, y'all, you're doing yes, great. Yes, you are like, keeping funny, up a lot better than some people do. See, this is what group sex feels chair. like. Nobody knows whose turn it is, and everybody's just trying to do something. I wouldn't know. Wait, and last question about your IUD, you call ICDC Stop worrying about Melissa's pussy. Ever no, since you well, got last this question, job, last question, last question. Pussy. Do you still get your menstrual cycles? Yes. Her they, what cycle? Menstrual, menstrual cycles. cycles. Yes. You the, said menstruing? Menstrual nigga. cycles. Yes, they yeah. are. Yes. She yes. still surfs the crimson wave. Yes, I do. <laughs> the, I still, yeah. The red I'd much rather get an email from Mother Nature saying, okay, you're not pregnant this this, that's this month. Hilarious. Now but, that I'm vegan, nothing in my house has blood in it. I ain't fucking <laughs> with that shit. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, well, well, it's it's yes, I still get that. Good luck your ICDC college. Melissa, break. I would <sighs> say you have you know I've watched all our shows back multiple times. We have talked about your vagina. We need to make a video and a ooh, show ooh. just about your vagina because there's literally at least three hours. <laughs> I know it's a very interesting topic. Maybe we can give that job. She's really to pretty too. She looks like a flower in bloom. I don't listen. I rebuke you, safely <laughs> from here. <laughs> get them I rebuke lines you, out of here. Satan. Okay, so look. <laughs> 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 Yes. Yes. I, I, rebuke her I, though. I rebuke the vagina today. Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's talk, let's slow it down a little bit and stop talking about 
you know, all of Giovanni's advances towards me today during the show and <laughs> talk about something <laughs> serious. So what else? <laughs> what? So what are you working on right now? And where can people find you? Because if people haven't heard you sing, they need first to. of all, they got to hear you live. Hey, can you just give us a little bit, please? Oh, Come on. No, I have to. No, if it, okay. No, if I mean, please, just a little bit. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> Come on, b Let me see. Uh, I compromise. Hanging out with friends from my past I thought no harm done But my flesh took over in a flash Even when I was with them My mind wasn't there For I knew if you came lower than I'd be left so like a lost sheep that has gone astray I went back in the fold And I'm back here to start restoration oh, I know that I've gone way too far Come on now, hey, big there. Uh, brother Pass Collection played around. <laughs> Nigga, I said Pass Collection played around. <laughs> Only if we're buying you condoms so you can't reproduce. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, control is crazy, bro. Wow. Man. That was impressive. We know another good mutual friend, Stevie Mackey, man. Stevie Mackey, man. Yeah, good, good friend. Yo, jeez. Good, good dude. Christ. So, what, you got any shows coming up, performances, appearances? Yeah, what? Um, December 3rd uh, at the Wallace Annenberg. I'm doing uh, the Black Belt release concert that's in beverly hills okay uh december 18th i'll be in memphis so if you're out there i'll, I'll be there um i'm gonna be shooting uh, my first television show monday <coughs> we'll you'll hear about that later okay mm-hmm. and uh i got a biopic that's coming up it'll be out fall of 2017 about everything we talked about here wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh and black belt the black belt mixtape which includes conversation the song mm-hmm. will be out december 17th for free you can still get delorean as well yeah delorean is out right now on itunes uh, Ferrari and DeLorean are the two that I would say that the fans need to, ch- to check out. Mm-hmm. I'm on um, Twitter, Be Slade Now, Periscope, Be Slade Now, B S L A D E Now. My website, mm, IG, <laughs> Instagram, Twitter, okay. Snapchat, okay. everything's Be Slade Now. And we're going to okay. be looking for this uh, collaboration with Leandra. And if yeah. you talk to Leandra, I'm going to give you my number, but I yeah. would love to talk to her. With Le- I'm a fan of yeah. Leandra. Mm-hmm. And uh, but when I, she comes out here to record, oh, then yeah. we can just Absolutely. bring her by. We can create some content. We'll yeah. come to the studio. Yeah. 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 A, no Patron, though. No. I'm well, I would actually that. like to see her. No. no. Okay, no. No, no. 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 You, let me tell you what you go and look up, Leandra. YouTube, Leandra Johnson, Congo Room. Okay. She, did you Downtown. see that? Mm-hmm. Wore it out. She, <laughs> this well, is she a Jamie a... Foxx's Congo yeah. Room when he was doing the Congo Room. Uh-huh. I mean, if they, if anybody in there didn't feel the anointing, they were they were they were on some other shit. Yeah. she's amazing. Yeah, she is. Her story is amazing. How she, we'll talk yeah. offline about that. Well, then but, let uh, her have a shot of Patron every now and then. No. Okay. Because her story, if you watch Sunday's Best, she came out as an alcoholic, somebody struggling. Oh. I think it's still. I think it's amazing that it's still relatable because, like <laughs> me, I've had a lot of issues with alcohol and mm. I don't drink now. But you know. She's still in that church world and trying to navigate through all that. You're not going to show up at the Stella Awards with Pastor Shirley Caesar and then you sipping Patron backstage. Just that, that. But you might find some green screen. <laughs> <laughs> you name it. I have unfollowed everybody that has posted that on my timeline. And well, I guess I'm note, unfollowed them. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that shit's me a lot. <laughs> okay, so before we go, you're not going to save your top or bottom. Jason. Okay. I can't. Thank you for coming on our show. (laughs) 